You're listening to Cash and Sass. I'm Lisa Marie, your go-to gal for all things money. As the Sassy Wealth Queen and the brains behind the Sassy Wealth Coach, I'm here to take you on a thrilling ride from the financial chaos to sassy and sexy money. Welcome back to another episode of Cash and Sass Podcast. My name is Lisa Marie. I am the Sassy Wealth Queen, the brains behind this podcast and the Sassy Wealth Coach. And with me today, I have Stoy Hall. I pronounced that correctly, right? Oh, absolutely. I hope so. Okay. (laughs) He is a distinguished figure in the realm of financial planning, recognized for his innovative approach to wealth management and his dedication to promoting financial literacy. As the CEO and founder of Black Mammoth, Hall has cur- car- excuse me, carved a niche in the financial industry by focusing on inclusivity, collaboration, and holistic well-being of his clients. His expertise is not limited to financial advisement. He is also the founder and fund manager at Cala Capital, where his strategic insights drive the firm's success. Beyond his professional accolades, he is, devoted- he is a devoted father, <clears throat> embodying the values he imparts through his work. His personal life, much like his professional endeavors, excuse me, (coughs) is a testament to the importance he places on family, education, and the pursuit of happiness. His approach to financial planning extends beyond numbers, emphasizing emotional intelligence and psychological aspects of wealth management. He is also the host of a podcast, which I absolutely love, and it's called the No BS Wealth Podcast. And there he shares his insights and experiences engaging with industry leaders and innovators to uncover the realities of wealth and mindset. So again, Make sure you go check out that podcast as well. Thank you for being on my show. I was just telling you before we started that I have been looking forward to this um, for a couple of months now, (laughs) Um, and I'm so excited to have you here. And of course, we're going to dive right into going from that scarcity you know, that shift, right? That that a lot of people have a hard time doing that shift from scarcity to abundance. And even you and I have had that, um, have had to do that shift. So welcome again. And we're just, we're going to get started. Um, can you tell me your, a little bit about your story, like how you did the shift? Yeah, absolutely. First, appreciate being on the show. And I love your show as well. Like we had Thank talked you. about off camera, the fact that there's so many wealth money podcasts out there that really just talk about investing in ways to get rich quick and all that crap. And that's not real wealth. That's not really how you build things. So I definitely appreciate being on. Um, I grew up with a a single mom, father, not in the picture, uh, mom working 12 hour shifts and, you know, really raising myself or having my grandparents raise me as well as a bunch of friends, other parents. Right. And so I learned at an early, early age that like money matters. Um, my mom was really, her love language was definitely like gifts and possessions, not time and, and experiences at that point in memories. And so I wanted to figure that out and be like, why? Like, what? how is this going on? And what can we do? But it all tied back to money, right? You have to have money to do everything. Money is the most important thing. Money over family, money over time. And that's how I was raised. And it took me a very long time. I still fight it to this day to make those decisions based upon what truly is wealth. And that is your memories. That is time with loved ones. That is ability to give back and not just, hey, I have a thousand dollars in my bank account or a million dollars in my bank account, whatever it is. Um, And what I really started me down that path of, I guess, from scarcity to abundance was a lot of the experiences that I've been able to go through because of whether it's my athletic background, my friends and their families or whatnot. But the one big, big trigger, aside from all those experiences that got me to that was when we went to Tanzania um, in 2011 with my football team at Drake and we show up and they're putting on a giant celebration, you know, and, and let's, let me back up. Their sandals are made from just tires, (laughs) right? Like they're just cut up tires. That's all they are. Um, and they jump a lot higher than we do. Um, and so they're doing this giant celebration and we're driving to the hotel and, um, it's dark. There's no street lights, obviously. Um, and the women are just sweeping their mud floors in their houses. Right. 
And to me, I'm like, what the hell are you sweeping mud for? Like that doesn't, it's counterintuitive because, you know, when mud dries, it becomes dust. You're dusting dust. None of that's going to really work, right? But the more I thought about it is they're wealthy. They're happy. They're taking care of their own home. And they have a lot less than I've ever had, uh, let alone, you know, talking about scarcity. They literally have lions in their backyard. And so that triggered me to understand that it doesn't matter about the money or the possessions you have. True wealth comes down to those people around you, ability to live your life and just be happy where you're at. Um, and that's how you start living abundantly as opposed to always in the scarcity mindset. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I say <clears throat> to me, being wealthy is more than just money. To me, it's um, being wealthy in all areas of your life. Meaning, you know, your spiritual, your emotional, your physical, your mental, and your and financial. And when we're uh, uh, wealthy in all of those areas, that's when we we're abundant. And mm-hmm. um, it's important that it's aligned with our values and our goals. Because if we're not living aligned with our values, <clears throat> our desires, and our goals then I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how much money you're making. You're still not wealthy. You may be rich, but you're poor in every single way possible. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and I've seen a lot of people who are rich, who are miserable, or they're Mm -hmm. broke because they don't know where the hell their money's going. They're not using it and utilizing it aligned with your values and your goals and making a difference in the world. You know, I just got back from Bali and that was, uh, that was mind opening, um, village. These women are working on concrete floors in flip flops and had, you know, this tarp thing over this concrete floor. And it, all it, ha- all it was, was a concrete floor, tar- like it's a thicker tarp, but a tarp it was over it. There were no doors no AC or anything, in flip-flops and shorts, and they're hand-making the most gorgeous uh, hammocks I have ever seen in my life. And they're all smiling. They're happy. They're they're doing, and, you know, and it was, it was a social enterprise is what we were seeing because these people come in and they're teaching these women how to do this so they can make things mm-hmm. to sell so that they can then have clean water, food, the irrigation, the kids can then have food and go to, and have education. And it was just mind opening because, like you said, okay, they have less than I have ever had, even when I also grew up with a single mom working a plant. I was responsible for getting myself up to go to school. She worked night shift. It was our responsibility to put ourselves to bed at a decent time because that was back in the time where the neighbors watched us from next door. Yep. <laughs> We don't do that no more. <laughs> no, no, we do not. <laughs> we do not do that no more. That shows my age. Um, but th- you know, what I mean that I gr- that was how I grew up, yeah. and then to see that and see all the smiles, and I'm like, you know what? They're making it fun, and that's another piece I think to being truly wealthy is making sure that we're enjoying what we're doing and enjoying our lives. And if we're not, then we really need to sit back and look at it because that's when we are enjoying it, we're able to grab a hold of that abundance, right? A lot quicker. And, you know, one of the things I'm going to ask is because I know other people going, okay, Stoy and Lisa, that is just easier said than done. And I'll admit it is because life, we have inflation like there's no tomorrow going on right now the last four years have not been the easiest four years Mm -hmm. um for pretty much everybody um so you know someone's gonna say when all of that's going on how do we reach in and do that and see that and be able to grab a hold of that i think you got to get away from the fear of like the end is near type of situation right let's we have not been in a Great Depression era since that one time, right? Like the, like we've been in some depressions and, and some recessions, et cetera, but it's never been to that degree where, you know, America has to then say, well, you get a bag of rice and four cups of water, right? We're, we're not going to get to that point. 
we're just not built that way anymore. And so when everyone's thinking of, oh, the world's going to end, zombie apocalypse, whatever, however extreme you think mentally, you got to knock that out because it's not actually that bad, right? It is really not that bad. Does it suck? Are interest rates out of control? Does it hurt our piggy banks? Yes. Has our salary not increased since the 1970s? Oh, absolutely. Don't get me wrong. But it is not to the degree at which you are choosing like life and death every day. Okay. And ultimately, as we all talk about, and I, I don't like talking about money and investments, but I'm just going to dip into it a little bit. The economy and the market always continue to go up in the long run. They always do. There'll be bouts of not great things. Yes. And we all have to live through it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, as long as you keep going forward, keep staying positive, keep trying to be better, at the end of the day, you're going to be just fine. You just cannot get wrapped up into the day-to-day um, politics of the world, the geopolitics of the world. Like, Just live your life around those people that you love and just keep moving forward. And that's, again, back to our wealth conversation, back to you in Bali and me in Tanzania. They didn't let all of those outside things come into their life. They are happy. They're in their world. They're doing what they're doing and just keep And they're loving forward. it. I mean, they're oh, loving they're it. Right. They're, right. They're, they're loving it because they get to make a change in their small village, mm-hmm. right? Correct. And 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 them making that change is then going to have a ripple effect because it's a small step you know, in the long run, it's still going to have a ripple effect. And what mm-hmm. I think is really important, and you you said it without saying it, so I'm going to say it. Focus on what f- focus on what you can control. You can't control the politics and the inflation and whatever else is going on in the world, but you can control how you react to it, how you live your everyday life, and how you think about things. And mm-hmm. I truly, truly, truly believe what you focus on, you create more of. So if you're focusing on all the negativity and if you're focusing on all of the end of the world, um, then that's basically what you're going to create around you because you're you're basically your mindset. That's all Mm -hmm. your brain, your mind, your subconscious. That's all you're going to think about. That's all you're going to see. And I still can catch myself sometimes going there. And I just, I'm so much better now at catching it. I catch it and I go, nope. And if I need to, I go and dance it out. I go, what a journal. I love, I don't, if I get in my head, journaling is not happening. Um, so I go dance it out. So then I can go journal. So, but move and just get that energy out, that negative energy out of you. Because then otherwise you are going to focus on that negativity. And that's what's stopping you. And get off the damn social media when you do it, because the algorithm will keep (laughs) feeding you that. They'll keep feeding it to you. So it's even harder to get out of the hole. So you literally need to put that shit away and go walk, go run, go dance, go get out to nature, because guess what? That's not going anywhere. So go outside. And if you see something you don't like, there's an X button. And after a while, when you exit out of your feed, guess what? It stops showing up. I have cleaned my feed like I, I have worked very hard. at. So when I am on Facebook, my feed is really, really whistle clean. And if something yeah. pops up, nope, a- a- X out because we're not we're not going there. And, yeah. and I agree. Go run, go walk, go on a trampoline, whatever. Right. But put the social media up because, you know, story's right. And, and that's the same thing with Instagram, TikTok, mm-hmm. all of them. Whatever you're looking at, the it's going to bring you more of. And so if you're looking at all of that crap, negative stuff, whatever, that's what it's going to bring up. Um, so I'll make sure I go and bring comedy. <laughs> yeah. I'll go look at yeah, the absolutely. comedians because I'm like, that's yes. what I want you to bring up. Yeah. And if it starts bringing up, neg- nope, I'll go start searching comedians. So it yeah. starts bringing those up in my feed. But that's, again, being intentional, right? So, yeah. you know, to build going from that scarcity to abundance, we have to decide we're going to take control of our thoughts and our actions and then be very intentional. And so I'm going to ask you, you I'm sure that it just wasn't a linear process for you. So what are some right. steps that you, because so many people believe it's an overnight thing and it's not, um, nope. but what are some steps that you took 
to help you go from or that you do now to help you stay in that abundance mindset and not that scarcity? Yeah. And first of all, it is a journey. It's a lifelong journey. It's never overnight. Just put that one to bed right now. And 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 you're uh, going to and please agree with me, you're yep. going to keep working on it for the rest of oh. your life. Yep. <laughs> yep. And there's gonna be moments you take two steps back. It, it's just gonna happen. Like there's no this is a whole journey. That's something that I know a little off what your question was, but uh, that is something they never taught us in schools. Our parents never did. Adulting sucks. Like it really does. No one taught us this, <laughs> right? They never taught you that you have to do this forever. And there's always ups and downs. It's never right. smooth sailing. So um, know that it's a lifelong journey. But steps that we always take is you have to do two things immediately before you can even really truly understand everything. That is, you need to get organized both mentally and financially, um, meaning, hey, I need to know what money's coming in, what money's going out. I need to know where my brain is right now and how I'm feeling with my relationship with my money, because that is the that is foundation. Number two, once you actually figure that part out, you then have to figure out what brings you joy, right? And I steal joy from Larry Sprung all the time, but is you need to figure out what brings you joy and what you want to align your goals in life with. Right. Because once you get those two basis things done, then you just marry them together. And then it's a lot easier to make decisions going down the road. Right. When someone's like, hey, let's go out to eat. And you're like, uh, no, nope, that doesn't. I can't spend that fifty two dollars because I'm saving for this or my joy is here or I don't like that restaurant or I don't like you. Right. Like, Ultimately, you got to figure that part out and it allows all your decision making to be a lot easier because it's now a. It's already there. It's aligned with who you are, mm -hmm. not necessarily what the outside is telling you, the media is telling you. And for those of you who are listening to this and not watching the video, I was sitting here going, yes, 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 yes. Because, Stoy, you just seriously, rep like, that is what I teach my clients and what I say on repeat. And I'm sure I'll say on repeat till the day I die. You must know what's going on with your money turning a blind eye and saying, oh, I'll just make more is not going to give you the wealth. Again, yes, you'll be rich, but you're still not going to be truly wealthy. You've got to know what's going on with your money. And, yep. and that is, honest to goodness, sitting down and I don't care if you write it, put it in a spreadsheet. I personally still have mine in a spreadsheet. And I have it the dates they come out because, again, people make mistakes. There's sometimes duplicate charges. I, ch I check, I go in and do a little quick check every morning to see, okay, did this come out like it was supposed to? Is it more than what it was supposed to be? Is it, you know, was there a duplicate? Whatever. It's just a quick check. Doesn't take that long, but it's a quick comparison to what I know is supposed to be coming, right? And then the other thing is, is looking at those extra expenditures, it, groceries and um, gas and food out to eat. A lot of times society has made it so easy for us just to tap that we don't realize how much money we're spending. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'll go one step further. I'm yes, figure out those, what brings you joy. What are the things you want to do and make sure that that's married to together. And if sometimes going out to eat is something you want to do, then put money aside for it. I have a, an account that is called Out to Eat. Everybody laughs at me, but I do. I have a savings account. It's not to hold money to gain interest. It's to hold money so that when my girls and I want to go out to eat or I want to go out to eat, if there's money in there, we can go out to eat. If that money is gone, then they're told, nope, there's no money in the Out to Eat account. We need to wait until next month. Ooh, they let me now ask you this come one. and ask me, mommy, is there any money in the out to eat account? They don't say I want to go out to eat. Yeah. They ask me, is there money in the out to eat account? I finally got them trained. <laughs> I love it. I have a, a different philosophy when it comes to the groceries and eating out budget lines, right? That goes against the grain a little bit or whatever. But let me, I'm going to ask you this because you do it a little differently too. Why do we separate groceries and dining out? Because what is fundamentally groceries and dining out for? To feed us, right? Like right literally right. to put food in my mouth. Right. Why don't we have a food line item? Just food, right? So that way you're not choosing between dining out and groceries. It's like, no, I have $800, $900 a month or whatever it is for food to feed me. 
I think that I've been doing that with my clients over the last few years now is because we always try to, we always go, oh, I need groceries. So we just go buy a bunch of groceries. And then you're like, oh, I'm too lazy to cook. So I go out to eat. And when you max out both is when we run into issues. Well, if fundamentally you're like, I'm just going to feed myself, that means if I go out, then I don't need to go buy those groceries. Or if I go buy groceries to feed myself, I might want to focus on that. So I've been challenged and I'm doing it where it's just one line item and it is food and food like only. That. Now, drinks are a different. Drinks are a different thing. Not, if you're going out to drink. That is not a food <laughs> budget. <laughs> that, that's entertainment. That is a different ball game. But like from food, it's there to feed us. It right, should be one right. item, not not two separate ones. Right. I, I mean, and I do. I like that. Um, for some people, that would work. What I do is I want my clients to be able to actually see the money is set aside for this, because a lot of times if mm -hmm. we leave it in one account, we end up touching more than we should. Or And then we're like, oh, where the hell the money went? Right. Um, I I'm one that has like multiple accounts. And so I allocate money in there so that when it's time and I want those things, I even have a spending account. It's my spending account. If money's not in yep. there, I don't get to go spend, period. Um, and if I have to adjust my budget, guess where one of the first things is being adjusted off? Yep. The spending budget. Your spend. Or the yep. out I call it budget. fun money. Yeah. We, the, the, we, we save fun money for ours. Well, yeah. Same I, have, I have summer fun. I have summer fun <laughs> money. The, then yeah. that, and then I have a pet account. Look, I have two big dogs, y'all, okay? I have a lab and a husky. You now know why I have a pet account. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, there's gonna those accounts, the fun money, the fun account, the you know, um, mine is my personal spending. Then I have a fun account, which is for me and my girls. So you know, and then if we're cutting into it, those are going to be the first places to cut, and then we're going to go to the other things if we need to. Um, and a perfect example is my business had these shifts, right? A lot of businesses have had shifts in the past ten months, so I've had this shift. And I've had to adjust some of those things, not mm -hmm. going to pretend that I didn't, um, because I think it's important to show you that that's the whole point is then you're able to see where you need to make the shifts. And Stoy, one of the other things I did is I had a client who was ov going over her food account. And what we realized was that she was buying all these groceries, but then she was so tired she was doing DoorDash. And so I finally looked at her and I said, why are you buying these groceries? And she said, because I, I need to feed myself. I said, okay, but you live in an area where you can get healthy DoorDash. Not a lot of places have that. Mm -hmm. Texas is one of them. Um, so you can get healthy food DoorDash to you. <clears throat> if that's what you're going to, if you, that's what ends up doing, cut the blasted food grocery budget out from 600 to maybe 100 because just getting the basics and then put it in the DoorDash and then you're going to, and she goes, oh, then I'm going to have extra $450, $500. I'm like, yes, because food was going to waste. Right. Because she was spending it, spending it at the groceries, but then she was so tired from working how, that she was doing DoorDash. So then, and that's what I call, I call it money leak. So that was, that's a money leak. He, he it's going to waste. So when we did that, she was able to take that 450 whatever dollars it was, and she was able to start chunking down on something she wanted to pay off. She got it paid off quicker, and then she was able to put that money towards the joy of something she wanted mm -hmm. to do. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. Why was I doing it the other way? I was like, because you felt like you needed to go to the grocery store. And yeah. buy the groceries and cook food. Now, I'm not saying go and get fast food all the time. That is not what I'm saying. Because no. I'm sorry. Fast food is probably the worst food you can eat. And if you like fast food every once in a while, fine. I, look, right. I love me some, uh, I think it's Dutch Brothers coffee. And thank God they're nowhere near me. Um, <laughs> because those things are, it's called picture perfect. And it's good. And if. They're just far enough away that whenever I travel and I might pass one, I get one. That's a splurge. I'm yeah. all for it. I I don't believe in cutting everything completely out and making it so strict that it's just like a, a strict diet. You're not going to stick to it. Um, what I believe in, like you said, is marry it to where it's you're looking at it and going, is this is this aligned with what I'm wanting to achieve? 
is this aligned to where where I'm wanting my money to go? So a perfect example is my uh, youngest is 13. She just started eighth grade and she wants to go on a cruise to celebrate the end of middle school at the end of the school year. Okay. So when I'm looking at my spending money, I'm going to look, okay, am I putting enough in there or is this really where I want this extra money to go? Or do I want it to go here so that we can do this? Because again, that's going to bring me joy taking her on that cruise, right? And that's just an example. You know, if you don't have kids, it could be something you want to do, or it could be something you want to do in your business, because this works in the business and personal, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. you know, it, it. I think it's important for us to realize that you have to know what's going on in your business and personal, even if you've got a team. And I'm all for it. You know, have have the CFO, mm-hmm. have a financial planner, have those things because <clears throat> I'm a CFO. So, yes, have us as a team and you still need to know what's going on. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm I the people I work with have to agree that they're going to be actively involved. It's the reason why I have client meetings, because we're I have them be actively involved because they need to know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're majority of what we do. Yeah. Numbers are numbers. It's we're curating their mindsets, their money mindset and their lifestyle, their true lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Cause what everything you brought up is things that we've been taught as Americans. That's what you do. You go to school, you get a degree, you get a job, you get married, you have kids, you cook your food at home. You only go out to splurge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we, we've been robotically <laughs> taught all of this. Yeah. And fundamentally, that is inaccurate as as humans, right? That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live life how we want to, what brings us joy or whatever. And so being able to splurge always, like don't always splurge, but be comfortable enough to be like, no, yeah, I can do that. But ultimately, it comes down to you fundamentally getting over the fact that you have been taught to do these things in a certain manner. And I love um, when people go... I have a kitchen and I haven't cooked in it ever. We bought a brand new house six years ago. It's because they know what they are. They go get food. That's fine. Just live that way. Just don't do it the opposite way. Right, right, right. A- absolutely. And then, and that's the thing is, is I tell people all the time, look, there's no judgment. Okay. If you would rather someone else, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Look, when I buy my house, because I'm planning on buying a house <clears throat> and I can, I'm going to tell you one of the things I'm going to be splurging on. It's going to be a chef to come in and cook. <laughs> <laughs> the area yeah. I live in, okay, we can't door dash healthy meals. Yeah. Columbia, South Carolina just hasn't caught up, okay? I went and visited Texas and you could door dash, I mean, like pick the stuff you want in your salads and have salads and all. Most of our door dash is not healthy, okay? <clears throat> and I don't like cooking. (laughs) (laughs) I don't mind. Let me rephrase that. I don't mind cooking every now and then. I don't want to cook all the time. So Mm -hmm. if I'm able to have a chef come in and cook and then someone clean my house, I'm going to be happy because that's when we have the house, we're going to have a pool and Lisa will be able to go outside in the pool. That's my joy. Yeah. That's what I'm aiming for. Right. And that's what Stoy's talking about is what is your joy? <clears throat> what is it that you're wanting? And is what you're doing with your money, how you're spending it, aligned with that joy? And I had, to, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I'm i sure, Stoy, you've had to take a hard look mm-hmm. at yourself several times, even now, as doing what you do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I had to take a look earlier this year, and I was like, Am I still aligned (laughs) or have I gotten off track a little bit? And I'd gotten off track because again, life and realizing the minute, like you said, the two steps back, realizing that you got off track as the first step and then getting back on track and then saying, okay, wait, I need to make an adjustments here. This is not, this is not aligned with. Uh, how I'm wanting to live my life. This is not aligned with the impact I want to make. This is not aligned with the joy um, that I want in my life. Um, and I just think that that's really, really important. Um, because again, if you're not having fun, what's the point? Yeah. 
No, you're you're not wrong. We literally just did this, I think a week ago, my wife and I, because the last 18 months we've been trying to decide, are we going to move, right? We live in Iowa. A long conversation cold. about Iowa, but cold. um, <laughs> cold for like four or six cold. months. It's, it's terrible. Anyways, <laughs> um, but like the cost of living is relatively low. You know, our home is solid. We have a good rate. And so we've looked at moving to Hawaii because that's like our home, really, honestly. Um, but two years ago, we figured out, hey, education wise for the kids, poor move, not a good move. Um, cost of living and all that fine, but like it's literally comes down to the education standpoint behind it. Um, or if we're going to Phoenix. Well, it's really, really hot. Um, see, and I love that. I, and me and be like, okay, yes, please. <laughs> see, that's what my wife said too, because she's always cold. But we don't have like a we don't have a good enough support system for the kids again, right? Yeah. For us. Um, Denver, where our best friends live with the girl, they have two girls the same age as our boys. And so we went out and this was our like the third spot. We're looking, we're, we're trying to figure this out. Um, and it just costs too damn much because it's ridiculous out there. But ultimately we were in a limbo for like 18 months. Well, when you're in limbo and you don't have a goal, you don't have that focus. You Get just spend the money. There's yep. no track, right? Cause yep. you're like, we don't know which one we're going to do. So, meh. Um, and so we even sat down last week and we're like, no, like, first of all, we decided that we're staying, we're going to improve our home and then we're just going to travel more. Our boys are in travel sports. So we figured that's going to be some of it as well. And just kind of hone that back in and get to get back on track. That is why I'm a huge proponent of everyone having a planner or CFO or whatever role you need that fulfilled to have a team because your off track won't be 18 months, 12 months, six months. It might be a month or two, but within that frame, they're already built out tracks. So you can get off a little bit, but it doesn't affect anything, right? It's literally what I tell my clients every month when we meet is we're doing great. And they're like, but we, we went this way. And I was like, that's fine. That's within my parameters. Your yeah. parameters might be tighter, <laughs> but realistically the parameters are out here and it's good that way. And so I'm always a huge proponent of hiring a team. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I had one with my client earlier too. She was like, how is it looking? I'm like, actually, we're looking good. We've, we're on track. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, we're on track. I said, you know, she goes, yeah, but we, I said, and she, she did exactly what you're saying your client did. We went, I was like, yeah, but we're okay because it works. It, it you know, it was within my track. It, we already built that outer part, right, that you're talking about. And um, I just think it's really important. Um, and we could probably go on and on and on and on um, <laughs> because we both, I can tell we both love this topic. So I already have ideas for future um, things. So um, that's the way my brain works. Um, I, I, I think I, the key thing I want people to take away from this is just start mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you're living with, with joy aligned with your values and your desires. I say values and desires. It's the same thing as joy. It, sure. Make sure it's aligned with where you're wanting to go. You know, I, I'm, I'm like you, I'm not moving out of South Carolina because it, although I would love to move somewhere warmer and y'all <laughs> in all, all, all uh fairness it does not get nearly as cold here as it does in iowa or right. and there's a reason why i will never live in iowa okay um one of many but definitely that one <laughs> i don't like the cold um yep. and there's reasons why i'll never live in colorado right. wisconsin and they're all the same reason it's too cold so in all fairness south carolina does not get nearly as cold I still think it gets too cold here. <laughs> that tells you how much I don't like the cold. However, I'm like you. When you look at it, my support system is here. And for me to move to Arizona, which is halfway across from you know South Carolina, I would lose my support system. And I have mm -hmm. two kids, and my oldest is autistic. And having that support system is really important. And you know, when you have kids, it's really important. You know, I have a 13 year old too, and you don't get a break if you don't have a support system and breaks are really important sometimes. 
Yeah, because um, adulting sucks. They didn't teach right? us that part either. It, no, they <laughs> didn't. We okay. Were you before I go into the free gift thing? Were you yeah. one of the ones who could not wait to be an adult and have the freedom yeah. because they made it sound all great, and then you realize, mm-hmm. oh shit! <laughs> yeah, take me back, please. Like, let me go back. <laughs> well, I don't want to go too far back, and adulting sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. have a meme that says, "I am done adulting. I'm going to the." Uh, it's a tree house. I'm going to sit in the tree house and I'm going to eat my Fruit Loops. Yeah. I'm not being an adult today. And that is like a meme that I absolutely love because I'm like, <laughs> yep, that's me. I am not adulting today. I'm going to go to an imaginary tree house and eat my yeah. Fruit Loops. Um, it, the the key takeaway, honestly, y'all, is to start and make sure um, that you're doing it aligned with your your goals. Mm-hmm. And for the love of God, you don't have to do it alone. I didn't know that there were people out there that could have helped me. I did it alone for a while. And then I realized, oh, wait, <clears throat> I can have a mindset coach. I can have um, someone help me mm-hmm. um, and support me. And now I still have that support. I still have coaches. I still have. And yes, I have a mindset coach. I work with your mindset and I have a mindset coach. Because again, like Stoy said, that is something you're going to do for the rest of your life. Um, and my mindset coach is further along, so they're going to be able to teach me things, you know what I mean, that new tools that I can put in my belt, that I w- in my toolbox that I wouldn't have had before. So I think that's the biggest thing that I want you to take away on this episode. Um, Stoy, can you please tell my listeners, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you have a free gift for them. Yep. And will you uh, explain what, what that is? Yes, actually, and since we've last talked about that, there's something else coming out. But um, I have a, a free ebook uh, that I provide out for women and uh, minority business owners, nice. um, and it is awesomely titled um, "Of Getting Rich Quick: uh, How Not to," because that's not a real thing. Um, so we can go ahead and download <laughs> that. Um, but also I'm, I am launching, um, with a a whole bunch of other people. I've realized that people want to talk to me and get to me more often, right. Um, than just hiring me as, as their planner. Um, and so we're having a discord coming out as well. So if you reach out to me, I will get you onto that discord platform as well. Um, where you'll have access to me 20, not 24 seven, cause I won't respond, but you can at least message me 24 (laughs) seven if you want. Where now my <laughs> podcasts, when we record them, are going to be live. So you get them two months before they actually go out to the public, um, as well as Q&A sessions once a month. So those are two really easy giveaways that nice. I've been working on a lot, um, ultimately. And then another surprise for you is we're going to have you on my podcast. Oh, thank um, you. And we're going to have a really good fun time doing so. So I always Sassy end my Pete podcast. Care at all. <laughs> All of it. Give me all of it because I'll put the pink light on in my background too in my oh, podcast just for now, you. Now you game yeah. on. Game on. Game on. See, so I knew for that. I knew I knew I knew I couldn't wait for us to talk. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's gonna be a great time. But I always end my guest stuff with, hey, just take that next step. And all all I ever ask of anyone ever listening is reach out to us, DM mm-hmm. us comment. I don't care. And I'm not doing it for the algorithm or us getting paid or views or anything. I want to answer your questions. I want to be able to help you in wherever you are, your journey. But if you don't reach out, then we, we can't really help you as much. Right. So I always say, get on all the social medias. I'm all over the webs. I'm, you can find me anywhere. And you can reach out to someone because I'm connected with him everywhere. And I'm the same way. And I, and thank you for saying that because I believe the same thing. Uh, Y'all, I don't care about the algorithm. Every single time I go to figure out the algorithm, it changes. So I'm yes. not saying comment and reach out to me because of that. I'm saying that because I honest to goodness want to help. And like Story said, we can't help if you don't ask. Um, because as good as we are, we're not mind readers. Um, sometimes I wish I was, but then I think it would be dangerous. So, you know, just reach out, comment, DM. However, and I am honest to goodness, I'm as easy as defined as Stoy is. I think we mm-hmm. we were we were able to find each other very easily when we first connected. Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you very much for being on the show. Y'all go check out his podcast, please. Um, I promise it's worth it. I've been listening and I love it. Um, and please go. I'm going to download his book. Um, go download the book and just um, 
Until next time, remember to stay sassy. Thanks for joining us this week on Cash and Sass. Check us out on social media and on our website at www.thesassywealthcoach.com where you can download my free Money Story Start Guide. The website again is www.thesassywealthcoach.com. And as always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh content. And remember, yes, it is possible to have sassy and sexy money. See you next week.